what do we think of this Bears offseason? Which was, you know, last season was tear the thing down, strip it back to bare metal. This season was the start of the rebuild project. How have they done? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, foundationally, they've done a lot of what they said, and I think they are still set up for so much success going forward. You know, thank you to Lovey Smith and, and our guy Davis Mills, Mills Mafia down in Houston. But look, I mean, when you can get DJ Moore and you actually don't even give up draft capital, you're getting DJ Moore as a throw-in to a massively plus draft capital move. Um, you didn't need a quarterback, so why would you stay at one, or at least you didn't think you did? Um, look, the defensive line is still probably one of the worst in the NFL, but I think the protection for fields is now hopefully around NFL average, and their receiving core also hopefully around NFL average, which I think the, the, the upside to maybe even sneak into like a top 10, top 12 wide receiver group. So I think they've done about as well as they could um, in a one-off offseason given how bad the team was entering the offseason yeah much like carolina i mean my favorite move for, for chicago was the trade it was not sticking at number one using that pick trading back getting the the haul uh maximizing what you could get for that one spot that you got kind of lucky to get in the first place like it, it required that texans win to take you to that number one spot and they took advantage of that as best as humanly possible so my favorite move they made was trading out of that Picking up DJ Moore as part of it, which is huge. I mean, if you want to zero in even further, uh, micro analyze the trade and say, look, my favorite element of it is picking up DJ Moore um, as part of that trade. Like, that's absolutely huge. But that, I think, is is by far my single favorite move that the Chicago Bears made this offseason. It's just hard to argue, right? I mean, you bring in a guy that just got extended to, so is on the first year of a new contract, is a... I know everyone squabbles. He's a number one wide receiver, whatever you want to define that as. I think he's top 20 in the NFL. I mean, the guy was a thousand yard guy playing for Carolina with, you know, the list of quarterbacks that I just mentioned uh, before who, who are frankly not good. So it also, and I think I've said this a bunch of times too, but we always look at A.J. Brown going to Philadelphia. It wasn't just A.J. Brown going to Philly. It was making Devontae Smith a number two receiver right. and, and Dallas Goddard freeing him up like everything else it does. Now in Chicago, Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool, Cole Komet, all these guys, are no longer a, a, a focal point of the offense, or rather, they're just they're they're knocked down a peg, and so I think it improves everything um, with, with that offense. My second favorite move they made, though, is T.J. Edwards for the contract that he's on, the linebacker coming over from Philadelphia. I think that's an absolute steal, um, given how little resource were plugged into there. But Chicago, interestingly. So they had a couple of moves I think that were fantastic. They generally did a lot of work. I, I didn't like a lot of their personnel moves. Not that I hated them, but I think a lot of them were questionable, may, maybe not the right word, but I just didn't love the choices that they made. So sinking a ton of money into Tremaine Edmonds, having essentially passed on the option to do that with Roquan Smith, uh, Tremaine Edmonds coming off a career year, but massive outlier year relative to everything in his career previous to that like a special athlete built like the prototype for today's nfl linebacker is this huge fast rangy incredible length type of player but hadn't really put it together before this most recent season now you're sinking an absolute ton of money into that off the ball linebacker position while you know the defensive line still need to work which kind of boxed him into a corner a little bit needing to go into the draft targeting that defensive line, which is where you get, you know, second round picks like Gervin Dexter and, and third round picks like Zach Pickens, themselves players that I didn't necessarily love. Uh, we talked in the, the, the build up, Tyreek Stevenson, the corner they drafted in the second round was a guy that I didn't love as well. So I generally, I just, I think I wasn't wild on a lot of the individual personnel decisions that they made. Yeah, I think it's fair to one or two just the asset, you know, allocation of resources and why they spent so much at certain spots. I mean, you know, I, I would say the one thing with the Roquan versus Tremaine thing, like, you know, you mentioned the, the size of Tremaine Edmonds. If you want a mic in this, you know, Matt, Matt Eberflus system, like you want a Tremaine Edmonds coming off, like you said, best coverage grade of his career, a top five coverage uh, linebacker for us last offseason. I, I think if you, you do kind of get concerned, why was it such a breakout year? He will be 25 in week one of this season, his sixth NFL season. Um, I know people love to throw those numbers around like, oh, you know, you just, he's only 25, yada, yada. But um, I get it. I, I get it. I, I do. I, I think it's interesting to, you know, spend that much in the back seven and still, like I said, I think probably have the worst defensive line in football. Um but I'll tell you this, I think with the extra draft capital they have and the fact they still lead the NFL in cap space by over $10 million, 
I don't think they're done. I think they might be trading for an edge rusher before week one. Ooh. Um, it's also like it, it's an interesting strategy because you could see the things that they were targeting with the – it's not like they just signed bad players. Like that's – that's happened before. NFL teams have done that, where they've sunk a ton of money or draft capital into players that are just objectively not good and don't really have the capacity to be. As much as I wouldn't have sunk that money into Tremaine Edmonds, and I think there's a lot of risk attached to him given his career so far, like I get it. I understand why you covered a guy like that, and he was genuinely fantastic last year. If you get that guy again every single season, it probably ends up being a good move. Similarly, the guys that they drafted, those defensive linemen, Gervin Dexter, Zach Pickens, you can understand what they're targeting with those guys. You can, you, you only, the question is whether they're actually going to tap into that potential and end up getting that player, uh, realizing the potential, or if it's the right risk to take, or if they're sort of betting on the, you know, the small side of that potential outcome. Again, they're moves that I wouldn't make, but I at least understand what they're doing. So my point being, it all has a chance to come good if they're proved correct, you know, on a few of these personnel decisions. Like, they're, they're gambles that I wouldn't take, but ultimately if they pay off, if they get the payoff from them, they win. I, I think you put it perfectly there where it's like you you know the vision. You understand at least what they're trying to do. For right. the draft players, every single guy is a, you know, his athletic testing was off the charts in many different ways. If you trust that you can develop these players and these athletes up to be good NFL players in your system and it pays off, then that's great. They're young. They, they are athletic as can, as can be. Um, and then in free agency, look, I get that, like you mentioned, the good, good player versus bad player, all that. I think, and this is refreshing as a Bears fan because it was not the case in the prior regime, they set prices that they were not willing to spend. Look, I got examples. A guy like a Mike McGlinchey or a guy like a Draymond Jones, I don't, I don't know for a fact either guy was on their radar, but I don't think they were going to just go to any number possible to bring that player in. I think they set a line, said, we'll pay this much and not a penny more, and I think they actually stuck to that. So, yeah, we'll see if it works. Maybe it'll all you know blow up in their face, but I think they actually had a clear plan, which... You know, it sounds like reductive to say they all don't, but it certainly doesn't seem like some teams have a clear plan at times. No, I mean, I, I think it's true. Um, so we gave uh, both parts of their offseason draft and free agency a B plus. That shakes out to an A minus overall when you compare the, when you combine the two. Um, I think just the move that they made to trade down, amass the draft capital, pick up DJ Moore, like that's going to secure a reasonably good offseason grade for Chicago, and then. The proof in the pudding is going to be, you know, what percentage of those quote unquote risky picks that they made or risky personnel decisions that they made are going to end up being proved correct. And the other sort of sneaky element to that is they kind of have a, a contingency as much as I don't like some of these selections or, or personnel moves, they've almost insured it with a sneaky backup option in each spot, right? Like maybe Tremaine Edmonds doesn't justify the kind of deal they gave him. On the other hand, um, TJ Edwards could end up being an absolute freaking steal for the amount of money they gave him and completely offset whatever disappointment you get from Edmonds. Similarly, I don't like Tyreek Stevenson as a, as a corner prospect. He's just not a guy that I would touch in the draft given his tape. But Terrell Smith from Minnesota in the fifth round, I think could end up leapfrogging him. Like you, it, That could be another Kyrie Elam, Christian Benford situation where week one, we're talking about the fifth round pick being the starter, not the guy that was drafted in the second round who everybody expected to be the dude. So I think they've, maybe not intentionally, but a couple of the picks or a couple of the personnel moves that I didn't love have the chance to be completely solved if, they, if the guys that I did love uh, end up being the guy instead.